Hey everybody, my name is Sarah and today I'll be guiding you through some tips for downward facing dog. This short tutorial is great for beginners as well as seasoned practitioners because we do down dogs so often that it's a great pose to come back to and to refine and just get to know in different ways as we progress in our practice and learn more about anatomy and alignment and all that good stuff. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I first started practicing yoga, I kind of scoffed when people said that it was a resting pose because it didn't feel that way to me. It felt really hard and I felt shaky and, and I just thought, when am I going to get out of this pose? But fast forward to now, um, using these tips that I'll teach you over and over and coming back to the alignment in the pose I feel much stronger in my down dog and I don't necessarily feel restful there, but it feels it feels more easeful and I definitely enjoy being there for longer periods of time. So let's get you to that place. We'll start in tabletop pose. Stacking the shoulders over the heels of the hands and the hips over the knees. And you'll spread your fingers nice and wide, as wide as you can. Really spread the fingers away from one another. Root down through your inner hands where your thumb and pointer finger meet. You can have your pointer finger facing forward or your middle finger facing forward. I find that there's a little bit more space through the shoulders and the chest when my pointer finger is pointing toy toward the top of my mat. And then with the, the arms straight and maybe a tiny little micro bend to the elbows, squeeze the wrists and the forearms in toward the midline. And you'll start to feel the arms turn on and even the shoulder girdle. So keep squeezing the forearms in like you're trying to pull your hands toward each other, but they don't actually move. Keep that energy and slide the shoulder blades down your back toward your waist. Slide the shoulder heads away from the ears and make some space across the collarbones. Now try not to let the, the ribs and the belly sag toward the floor. Hug the front ribs up into the body and scoop the belly in, feeling the tailbone lengthen behind you. Keep all of this as you curl the toes under. Push forward through the hands as you glide the hips back to downward facing dog. As you arrive in downward facing dog, feel free to widen your feet if that feels more spacious for you. And I'm going to encourage you today to maybe step your feet further back than you usually would. A lot of us tend to choke up in downward facing dogs, so our, our stance is very short, and that does not give us much space to play with the alignment. So just for today, I'll ask you to make your down dog feel nice and spacious and long, maybe walking your feet back a little bit. It might feel a little bit weird, but just try it. Drive energy down through the heels of your hands, so like you're trying to push your mat away from you. That will lengthen your arms as well as your spine. Make sure you're breathing. You know it's a lot of alignment, but we'll go through each part. So you'll keep that energy pushing through the hands, like you're trying to push your mat away from you. Squeeze the wrists and the forearms in. You might gaze maybe at about the middle of your mat, maybe back toward the toes. Middle of the mat is nice because it, it keeps you from hanging in your head, so you keep that strength through the back of the neck. Good. And then soften up the knees just a little bit. So even if you're really flexible here and you can straighten the legs, soften the knees just a tad. Maybe more than a tad, maybe quite a bit. And then with the knees bent, tilt your sitting bones up toward the sky. Right, So you'll start to feel the pelvis tip forward. Right, Like your, your, the bowl of your pelvis has water in it and you're trying to spill that water along the front of your thighs. So you'll tip the pelvis forward into anterior tilts as you tilt your sitting bones up toward the sky. Okay, and you should feel a little bit more stretch through the back of the legs. Keep that and again, hug your front ribs in toward your body. 
to fill up the back of your waistline. Right, so we're not actually trying to overly press the chest toward the thighs. There's a little bit of that, but we don't want to be hanging in the shoulder joint. Right? So the outer armpits will lift away from the floor. The lower front ribs will hug in, knees soften, and the pelvis tips forward. Now feeling into that alignment, reestablish your foundation. Press your hands and your feet away from each other. Right, so there's a lot of energy traveling down into the legs, into the feet, down through the arms and into the hands. And then take a really big breath into the sides of your ribs. Exhale, hug in. And then come forward into plank pose. Exhale, lower your knees down onto the mat and sit back onto the heels. You might rest your hands, the backs of your hands on your thighs and give your wrists just a little rest there. That's, that's a lot, um, especially if you're new to Downward Facing Dog. But I hope some of these tips worked for you and, and play with them. That's a lot going on. We're using the whole body when we do Downward Facing Dog. But practice those things in tabletop pose and you'll keep refining, you'll keep growing and evolving. And over time, Down Dog should hopefully feel stable and uh, a little bit more enjoyable. So thanks for watching.